Good morning, beautiful people. Look what I can do now. I can start my morning with coffee again. I didn't share the clip with yesterday. I had my first coffee again after two weeks. I actually had could technically, theoretically, have my first coffee on Saturday um, because that's when the two weeks were over. But for some reason, I didn't feel like drinking the coffee. So, and that was hard because like I put it in my mind and in my head that Saturday is gonna be the day I can finally drink coffee again. And then in the morning, I just didn't feel like it. I actually had very good energy and yeah, I wasn't craving it. So I didn't drink coffee on Saturday, even though I could, which I'm extremely proud of. But yesterday I had my first coffee and it was amazing. But it also wasn't like over the top amazing. I definitely like the taste of coffee, but I also didn't have a massive effect from the caffeine or something. I actually had two ca coffees yesterday. And um, yeah, I didn't, one thing that I was kind of worried about if I would get like anxious, like anxiety-ish episodes because some people who, who were off of coffee for a while, and I mean, I'm only two weeks, right? Like I'm not like other people were like off from coffee for three months or six months. Um, but they told me like when they had the first coffee again, like they went nuts and they got anxiety and like sweaty hands and like anxiousness. And I didn't get that, so that's good. And I just like the taste of coffee, so it's nice to have a coffee again in the morning. Um, but I actually wanted to talk about something different, which I realized yesterday. So yesterday was a beautiful day for me. Yesterday I kind of, I guess you could say I took off. I didn't do anything for work, like, I, like literally nothing. Usually when I have days where I take off, you know, take a day off, I'm you know, I'm at least in the morning for like two or three hours. I'm like answering emails and catching up with stuff and messaging people and, and checking social media and like doing at least the things that I need to do to kind of like keep the status quo, I guess, or at least, you know, vlog or edit the vlog. Literally, yesterday, I didn't do anything. And um, I didn't really have an agenda except just trying to, you know, listen to what I wanted to do and just doing that. And um, I spent a lot of time with Anastasia. We, I actually slept in. That was amazing. Um, we went to a coffee shop. I had a coffee. I read a lot. Man's Search for Meaning. Probably gonna review that book. It's an incredible book. I don't know if I actually talked about the fact that I'm reading that book. Man's Search of Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Long story short, he went to a concentration camp. So. In, in World War II, he got deported to a concentration camp as a Jew, forced labor. He lived in a concentration camp for, I don't know how long actually, maybe two years or something. And you know, obviously in the worst circumstances ever. And he survived, but not only did he survive the concentration camp and came out, you know, on the other side, but he found meaning in the concentration camp. He found not only meaning, he found beauty and, and um, love and um, appreciation for the good in humanity in concentration camp. Think about it. He found the good in humanity in a concentration camp. Probably, literally, hell on earth. Like, none of us can even imagine not even close to imagine to what it must be like in a concentration camp. I mean, it's the worst of humanity. Murder, not, not just murder, it's killing people in a, in a systematic way and misery and hunger and... So, yeah, it's, a, it's an incredibly fascinating book with an insight into human psychology so I highly recommend that book um, and um, one thing that he talks about basically I think one of the main themes of the book is or one of the main takeaways that helped him in concentration camp is the fact that he says 
you know, life can be harsh sometimes and life can be random sometimes and sometimes you didn't do anything wrong, you did everything right and life just puts you in a concentration camp. Like, it's not your fault. Like, you didn't do anything to, do, to deserve being in such a place, right? And the powerful thing is that he talks about is that there's one freedom in a human being that cannot be taken away ever. And that is the freedom to choose how you want to react to what happens to you. All the other freedoms, freedoms can be taken away from you, right? People can put you in prison. They can take away your food. You can lose all your money. You can lose all your family members. Um, people around you can die. Um, you can end up in a concentration camp without doing anything wrong. And you can't control that. You cannot always control that. The one thing that is the freedom that no one can take away from you and um, that you can always choose is how you react to those things. And he said, like, in the concentration camp, obviously, a lot of people went crazy. They turned into animals. It was pure survival. It was, you know, survival of the fittest. You did what you needed to do to survive. And if that meant, you know, screwing over a different, like, your comrade, if that meant, you know, stealing stuff or, or murdering someone or whatever it was, like, that's, that's what happened. But some of the people in the concentration camp they stayed human. They still helped others. Like, you get one bread a day. That's your daily ration for food, one bread. And there were people who were giving away the food and the bread to other people who needed more than them. So, I actually didn't plan to get into the book, but this is just to say, read the book. Please, read the fucking book, it's so powerful. The hardest thing is reading the book while remembering he is talking about a fucking concentration camp. Because the way he writes, you wouldn't think he's in a concentration camp. He writes about the beauty he found and the meaning he found. And he writes about things in a very, very matter of fact way of, you know, we worked 12 hours in the snow with no shoes, having one piece of bread per day as ration for food. You know, it's like, Imagine that, it's insane. So yeah, the power of the book is reading that and remembering what you're reading is a guy who is in the worst place in history humanity has ever created. A concentration camp where they systematically kill, with humans systematically kill other human beings. So yeah, read that book. See you in the next video. Peace out. Hard to wake up when there's no alarm to wake you up. Sitting, breathing.